Welcome back. In the previous video, we started upgrading our application by using the .NET Upgrade Assistant command line tool to upgrade a class library to target .NET standard. Now we're going to continue that upgrade journey by using a different set of tools to upgrade some of the other projects in our solution. As you may remember, .NET Upgrade Assistant command line tool is a good fit for upgrading class libraries, console apps, Windows desktop apps, as well as projects like WCF or Xamarin projects. But for upgrading uh, projects with web dependencies, it's not a great fit because of the scope of the changes and the way it's difficult to do those through the CLI. For that, we have a different set of tools. Today, I'm going to be introducing the .NET Upgrade Assistant Visual Studio extension, which is a re-implementation of much of the same functionality you'll find in the Upgrade Assistant CLI, but made available through the Visual Studio uh, user interface. Uh, you still have support for things like console apps, uh, Windows desktop apps, class libraries, but the uh, .NET Upgrade Assistant Visual Studio extension also adds the ability to use an incremental migration approach, which works much better for uh, ASP.NET apps and projects with web dependencies. Let me go ahead and share some of the docs and, and walk through how this works. So if you go out to learn.microsoft.com slash ASP.NET slash core slash migration and look for the incremental migration section, this will walk us through how we can use the Upgrade Assistant VS extension to gradually migrate from ASP.NET over to ASP.NET Core. Because one of the challenges with this upgrade scenario is that there are many changes that are required and it may take weeks or months to completely upgrade your application from ASP.NET on .NET Framework to ASP.NET Core on .NET 7. Along the way, you might need to go to production with bug fixes, new features, etc. And so you're going to have to have multiple branches that will diverge as the months long process of upgrading a large ASP.NET solution goes on. To help with that, we now have the ability to do what we call an incremental migration. In this approach, there will be two apps running side by side that present themselves as one to the end user. So you can see in this diagram here that when requests come in, they will first go to a brand new ASP.NET Core app, which the tooling will create for you. If there's an endpoint in that ASP.NET Core app that can handle the request, it does so, and the response is sent back to the user. If not, then we use YARP proxy technology to forward the request to the original ASP.NET app, which sits unchanged behind this ASP.NET Core one. The original ASP.NET app then serves the request the same way it always would have, returning it ultimately to the end user. Both of these apps can depend on the same business logic in class libraries and so on. So from the user's point of view, everything's working as always, but on the development side of things, we're able to start taking endpoints, controllers, and action methods from the ASP.NET app and moving them one at a time over into the ASP.NET Core app. This means that you can take a single controller, migrate it, spend a few days, a week getting it working, and you now are in a point where you have a completely working application you could push it to production and run it live if you needed to. So if you have other bug fixes, features that are coming in, you don't need to diverge these code bases. It can all happen at once and you can gradually over time migrate more and more of your application from ASP.NET to ASP.NET Core until eventually all of the endpoints are here in the ASP.NET Core app. You remove the YARP proxy, the .NET Framework application, and you just are running entirely on ASP.NET Core. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can do that. There are some other tools in addition to uh, these docs on learn.microsoft.com. We have a great blog post by Olia who helped us early in this series introducing why we would want to upgrade to .NET 7 at all. Uh, if you search the .NET blog uh, for a post with this title, Upgrading Your .NET Project with Visual Studio, she walks through in more detail how to get started with this uh, VS extension and how you can use it. She talks about the different types of projects that are supported versus ones that are not supported and you still need to use the Upgrade Assistant CLI tool for, uh, and so on. Also, we have a GitHub repository, github.com slash .net slash systemweb dash adapters, where you can read about the system web adapters library, which is an important part of the Upgrade Assistant VS extension experience. This library allows you to use uh, 
common system.web APIs targeting .NET standard. So you can use these code patterns either on ASP.NET or on ASP.NET Core, or even in class libraries that previously had system.web dependencies that are shared between both your previous ASP.NET Framework app that you're still using and your new ASP.NET Core app that now sits in front of it. Uh, this is a great place to provide feedback. If you go over to the issues, you can provide feedback on this incremental migration experience. You also can get involved by creating pull requests. There's some guidance here as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up the Upgrade Assistant VS extension. It is, of course, available in the Visual Studio Marketplace as uh, VS extensions are. So I'm gonna go ahead and click download, do a quick download of the V6, and I'm gonna open it so that we can install the uh, extension. Give it just a minute to start up here. And once it starts up, we'll go ahead and get this installed. Uh, you can also get a, a quick intro to how how the tooling works on this page as well uh, when you've searched for .NET Upgrade Assistant here. Oh, got the install window open on my other monitor. I'll pull that up here so we can we can track that. All right, so we'll give this a minute to install. Okay, we'll choose, uh, we probably only need it on a 2022 preview. That's, that's the one I'll be using for for this series. And so we're now installing the Upgrade Assistant extension on uh, Visual Studio 2022. Okay, the uh, extension's installing. Okay, and the uh, extension has installed successfully. We'll go ahead and close this. I'm going to open up our eShop project that we've been working on, and we'll take a look at uh, some of the new functionality we have available to us now. Okay, pull, Let's see, got Visual Studio on my other monitor. I'll pull that over here. Okay, so here's our solution. And if we go and look in the extensions um, window, if we go up to installed, you can see .NET Upgrade Assistant is installed here. This is where you would go if you needed to uninstall it or disable it. You also can check which version of the extension you have and choose to automatically update it or not. And now that that's installed, previously we had upgraded eShop Legacy to .NET Standard, but that's the only project out of our three that's been upgraded so far. So now if we wanted to upgrade one of these other ones, we'd come in here, we'd right click, and we have this new option that says upgrade. You would click on upgrade and a UI appears that walks you through how you can upgrade from .NET Framework up to .NET 7. We could do the same thing with our utilities library as well. And you can see that because this is a library, we get to choose whether we want to upgrade it in place where it is, uh, side by side with multiple projects or incrementally side by side. Whereas with the uh, ASP.NET project, because it's a web app, uh, side by side incremental is the, is the only approach available for that one. Okay, at this point, we're ready to do some more upgrading. We've got the extension installed, we're ready to go. I'm gonna wrap this video up here, and in the next one, we're gonna use this tool to actually upgrade our web project. See you then.